So we're in your chemistry book in chapter 17, and we're going on to nuclear chemistry. So what is nuclear chemistry? We're gonna find out. Here's an example of a nuclear plant. And as you can see, the plant is going to be one that generates electricity. And that's what a nuclear uh, plant looks like. And if you're driving past them, you see something similar, although many look a little different than that. But, well, the story goes on Wednesday, December 2nd, 1942, in a Chicago football stadium that was abandoned, the science of chemistry changed forever. So this unused athletic court, they had piled these graphic bricks and uranium oxide pellets. And on a bank, um, a bank they basically put down electron um, counters, um, nuclear counters, they called them. And they were basically steadily clicking away, recording the decay of uranium. Then on th at 3.25 p.m., the neutron absorbing rods were pulled out of the pile and the clicking then rose to a hum. And then on the balcony, on a balcony, Enrico Fermi, he lived 1901 to 1954, an Italian physicist. He's, he studied his instruments and got out his slide rule. They didn't have the calculators we have now and calculating out what was happening. And he said, the reaction is self-sustaining. For 28 minutes, the rod was reinserted and the counters slowed down. And basically becoming self-sustaining, the nuclear chain reaction had happened and now was under control and they could safely shut it down. So what is this that happened? You know, you look back at 1942 and you think, what was going on in 1942? Well, there was World War II going on. You know, in the midst of World War II, we have Japan, you know, um, attacking the United States. And then we have the dropping of what? The atomic bomb, right? And so this was just prior to that time when we not only um, Enrico Fermi, but also um, a few others that were involved, Oppenheimer and a few of them that got, all of them were refugees from the war in some sense. Um, uh, most of them were actually Jewish refugees, scientists that got together to develop the atomic bomb because at that time they knew that Germany was on the edge of developing it. And if, the, if the, that had happened, it would have been a terrible since Hitler would be in control of that. So anyway, this is the same time, a little earlier, what happened with nuclear chemistry. Well, nuclear chemistry, um, actually, this picture of a, the first nuclear reactor here, nuclear chemistry um, touches every aspect of our life today, right? We can diagnose and treat cancer and diseases. Um, we can protect our food and medical supplies from infection with it. We can power ships and submarines and probe into space with nuclear energy. And also, um, we can generate electricity, just like the pictures right here, generating electricity. Very important with a nuclear reactor. Reactor. So this is the most important field of science, especially for the future, as you can see. I love this picture here in the midst. They're, they're trying to figure out the first, as the, um, as described there, they're trying to figure out the, the first nuclear reactor and how it's going to work in the midst of probably this in the 1940s here. So let's talk about this more. I'm going to go on to the next and you can see some of the, uh, here we go. Radioactivity. Radioactivity, what is radioactivity? We know changes in the nucleus. So what is the nucleus? Well, the nucleus, you have an atom. In the center of the atom, what do you have? A small, small area, and this area is called the nucleus. And the electrons, which we've been talking about, electricity, um, actually, you know, they stay in the outside shells of the nucleus, as we, as we found out before. So, you know, um, <laughs> scientists discovered that two atoms reacted chemically to form a molecule, right? They found that out. And the electrons shared the outer shell. That's what we've been talking about with electricity. 
where that outer shell is, e is either, you know, shared that outer shell or transferred to another uh, molecule, right? We've already gone over that. Well, now scientists discovered something very unique. The change that they found was actually the change in the nucleus, you know, that middle part of the atom, that the more dense part of the atom, this dense core. Now, we know now changes in the electron shells of an atom lead to chemical reactions. So if we have electrons, we're talking about chemical reactions, while changes in the nucleus of the atom are going to be called nuclear reactions. They're called nuclear. And we're in now talking about nuclear energy. So let's talk about the discovery here. A little history lesson here we went over. The discovery of uh, radioactivity. So in the 20th century, that's like 1900s, um, isotopes of certain elements were um, uh, noted to continue to emit invisible rays. And scientists like, what? Some of these invisible rays could penetrate a brick wall. And others, uh, they would be able to stop by a piece of sheet of paper. You hold up a piece of paper and it stop them. And it, it was also noted in photography about film and how fluorescent materials were glowing and some glowed and some didn't, but also the subject of mysterious rays was very, very um, intense to a lot of scientists. They became very curious on this subject of, of these mysterious rays. So radioactivity, the whole phenomenon of radioactivity was discovered actually by accident. And it was, discovered by, it was discovered by a French physicist named Henri Becquerel. And uh, Be Becquerel, actually it's Henri Becquerel, how you pronounce his name, in 1952. And he was fascinated by William Rotgen's um, discovery of x-rays a year earlier. And he wondered whether x-rays might be producing this, when sunlight strikes them, this fluorescent material. What is this fluorescent material? And so he, in the mist, he started to uh, put together, he wrapped, uh, put it together kind of experiment-like. He wrapped um, a, a photographic plate in heavy black paper to prevent exposure to light. And then he placed this fluorescent compound, which he, um, they called uranium, on the plate. And he exposed it to sunlight. And on the plate, this foggy developed area of the, the photographic plate had a fluorescent compound and it was just stayed there and like it was, you know, basically shining um, as exposed to light. So he thought, well, the sunlight must have caused the uranium compound to give off x-rays and this could penetrate and into this protective wrapping and basically the sun somehow got through the wrapping, the radiation of the sun. And so he didn't think about discovering anything to do with um, uh, nuclear energy at that time. Um, he, he went on and prepared another plate to repeat, repeat it. But he went out for the sunshine and he was going to do with the sun out with his photogra photography and put, covering up the plate and his experience. But, but the sun wasn't shining, it was a cloudy day. So he took the uranium and, with the, the plate and put the uranium on the plate and stuck it in a drawer and he was waiting for his next sunny day. Well, it wasn't a sunny day for uh, quite a while. And then finally, he got out that unused plate out of the drawer and he found that it was intensely fogging and even, you know, that, that sh shiny glow there, uh, and it hadn't even been exposed to sunlight at all. So he concluded that the rays were not generated by the, the sun, but something within the compound of uranium had caused this on the, uh, the photography plate, the photographic plate. And so then he realized, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't in um, the radiation coming, electromagnetic radiation at all coming from the sun, but the uranium was behaving in the property within itself and causing the uranium element himself to produce these mysterious rays. So, in the midst of all of this, we're talking, you know, this is, you know, we're talking about a time 
This is the beginning, the beginning of a new era. Of, okay, what's causing these, this radioactivity? And he did it. He wasn't even looking for it, you know, at that point. So going on to the next here, um, what, you know, as for uh, radioactivity in 1898, you know, so we're talking about, you know, 1898, that's a you know, long time, similar to the time of, um, of uh, Bokel, actually, um, his, his experiment there. We have in 1898, Pierre and Marie Curie. Curie, have you heard of Marie Curie? Curie? Of course you have, probably, because she's very foundational in the woman in the uh, study of radioactivity. In fact, you know, um, she actually, you know, died of uh, radiation sickness, sickness, but she did a lot of work on this subject. But in 1898, Pierre and Marie Curie found that thorium and its compounds radiate invisible rays just like uranium. And so they're the ones that named it radioactivity. So um, and they thought this is a new phenomenon, radioactivity. And they discovered um, two new radioactive elements, um, uh, um, polo polonium and radium. Polonium was named for uh, Marie Curie's, Curie's um, native land was Poland. She was, came from Poland. You can actually do um, a study on Marie Curie. Okay, so what is radioactivity? Let's talk about that. Radioactivity is where, the, first of all, let's look at the nuclear structure of the atom before that. In the atom, we have uh, positive protons in the, neutron, uh, the nucleus and we have unchanged neutral neutrons in the nucleus. The number of protons is called the an atomic number. The atomic number is also called Z as the atomic number, a big letter Z, but that's the atomic number. And it determines the identity of the element. We had that periodic chart, remember? And um, so the, the any, if you take, for example, if you take a carbon, um, carbon atom, you'll see um, that, that carbon has um, a mass, atomic mass of 12. And um, basically that 12 would be six uh, protons and six neutrons. So the atomic number, because in that nucleus, the protons and the neutro neutrons, that's gonna be our mass number. So if you took, take protons and you take the neutrons and you find that mass number, that's just gonna measure the protons and the neut neutrons um, density or weight. And then if you basically, um, you know, change the number of neutrons, you don't really change the identity. But if you change the, the protons, it would become a new element. So atoms of the same element can have different number of neutrons. What do we call these? Isotopes. We learned this before. So they differ, isotopes differ in their mass number, but they have the same protons, right? same number of protons or their same at atomic number. And so going back to carbon, we have two different types of isotopes of carbon. We have carbon 12 and then we have carbon 14. And so they have one of them basically is going to have more neutrons than the other, but they're both named carbon. So that's, it's important because we're going to be learning how we're going to be changing with, with nuclear energy and stuff. Things are happening, going to be happening in the nucleus. So we have stable and unstable um, isotopes. So if you took carbon-14, 14, 14, you'd be more unstable than carbon-12, you know, right? So some atoms, um, uh, protons and neutrons, are held together very loosely. If they're held together very loosely, they're described as unstable. And there's a tendency for unstable uh, molecules to basically, or I should say unstable elements, um, to shed subatomic uh, sub particles or break apart. So unstable means they're easily broke apart or there's something going on, they're unstable, 
um, they're going to turn into some other type of element or change in some way. So the nuclei of these isotopes are described as unstable because they have a tendency to spontaneously shed subatomic particles or otherwise break apart. So, so we know now, this is the beginning, we're just getting the beginning. So we're gonna be talking about nuclear radiation. So where does the radiation come from? Well, in the atom of the nucleus, when the nucleus breaks apart, it undergoes this change and energy is released. And this energy um, coming from the uh, ca caused from the subatomic particles um, can cause them to be actually when they're when they're changed to be ejected from the nucleus at very high speeds. And these uh, this high energy gives an electromagnetic wave. They call this a nuclear reaction, a nuclear reaction, because they radiate radiate from the nucleus. They call it nuclear radiation. So it says, and they undergo this change in both particles and electromagnetic waves are produced by this nuclear reaction and they are called nuclear radiation because they radiate. Any sample of unstable element continually emits energy is called nuclear radiate radiation. And this phenomenon of energy released from certain elements and certain isotopes is radioactivity. And such unstable substances are called radioactive because their tendency to go through nuclear decay. Nuclear decay, basically what nuclear decay is, is that the atoms will be splitting apart. That is nuclear decay. We're gonna go into talking more about nuclear de de decay. So, um, nuclides. What are nuclides? In um, chemistry, a nuclide is a specific type of atom described by both its atomic number and its mass number in contrast uh, to an element who's described only by its atomic number. So when you talk about a nucleotide, nuclide, you're going to talk about anything in the nucleus, right? Which are protons and neutrons. And so you're now looking at the neutrons. So nuclear energy a lot is going to be focusing on neutrons. And so we're going to be talking a lot about neutrons, protons, but neutrons in specific are going to be very, very important in nuclear energy. So uh, radioactive nuclides include all isotopes of all elements that are radioactive. So um, they all of these will have unstable nu nuclei and undergo some kind of de um, decay. So the term radioactive nuclides is often shortened to radionuclides. So you'll hear the word radionuclides. Those are those, um, those particles that are in the nucleus. So types of radioactivity. We're gonna go in depth with these types in the next section. But um, as we know, Rutherford, the Curies, um, but Crowell and others um, studied the nature of rays produced by naturally radioactive elements. So in their, this, uh, their studies, they discovered that radioactive substance may produce three different types of rays. And it's important that we know because these rays are very different and they act very differently. There were alpha rays, beta rays, and they consist of subatomic particles that are moving at very high speeds. You know, their alpha rays are being ejected from the, from the um, atom onto revealing that alpha particle, Carl, what is an alpha particle? It is a clump of two protons and two neutrons. That's a large amount to be ejected, but it'll be as ejected, it's identical to the nucleus of a helium-4. It's like, Basically, um, uh, ejecting from the nucleus helium. It turns out like helium-4 is coming out. So these are alpha rays. So you probably have the test question. Alpha rays look just like helium. And then we have a beta particle, and it's a, a high-speed electron. A beta particle is when an electron, which is in the outer shell, is actually emitted from the outer shell at high speeds. This is called beta particle. Gamma rays were shown not to consist of particles at all. 
um, but they are um, high energy electromagnetic waves. They're actually on the electromagnetic scale when we just studied that. But in the midst of a, a nuclear reaction, a lot of nuclear reactions emit gamma rays. And they're very high, um, high frequency, intense rays. Um, they're similar to ultraviolet rays or x-rays, but they're way more powerful. And then we're going to study that later on. So let's go on to your questions here. And then I'm going to stop. Uh, what is nuclear chemistry? Well, the study of reactions of um, the nucleus of an atom, right? So um, basically that's an easy definition. <laughs> What's the next question? What contribution? Contra contribution did Bacral make to the study of nuclear chemistry? Well, he actually discovered that out of uranium, his uranium was coming, emitting some mysterious rays that was coming out of the particle, not from the sunlight. Well, it was a big deal, thinking, well, there's something inside of, of this element that is bringing forth these, uh, this mysterious property, and he discovered it by mistake. And how about the Curies? The Curie, uh, Marie Curie um, actually um, um, coined the, the world, word radioactivity. She discovered radioactivity with um, thorium and these invisible rays coming from them, named radioactivity as such. Marie Curie basically um, did a lot of work, her and her husband both, uh, in advancing um, the nuclear, nuclear science, that is for sure. So, and they, uh, they named radioactivity in itself. On to what is uh, nuclear radiation? Nuclear ra radiation is where the nucleus breaks apart and undergoes change. It causes this energy to come from their, the nuclear it breaks apart, undergrowth change, ra this nuclear radiation, sometimes particle uh, radiation from particles, um, sometimes from gamma rays, but that energy, nuclear radiation. What is meant when a nuclide is described as radioactive? Um, well, radioactive means that, that, that it's in a very unstable condition. So it's tendency to go undergo nuclear decay. So that unstable condition, it won't remain in that unstable condition long. So it's going to change in some way. And it's, um, how this change comes about, we'll be studying, but it's actually um, very subject now to nuclear decay. So, so we'll stop there. We're gonna go on to section two.